Hey everybody, we are back, finally. Um, back on the bench, back on some videos. It's been a long time, I understand. Went through a move and had to do a remodel because I put an offer on our new house. Uh, we sold our other house and put an offer on the new house without my wife ever seeing the house, so I kind of bought a house without my wife ever seeing it and so um yeah um ended up doing a remodel uh really quick after you know like we basically were moving in and had to do a remodel um because it you know because i needed it and uh, i bought a house without my wife's uh without my wife ever seeing it so um that's what you do when uh, you do that kind of stuff. So anyway, most of that's done. I still got a little... I'm far enough into it where I don't have to do a bunch of things. And um, I'm far enough into it to where it's easy not to finish it. So that's one thing I got to make sure I do is like just all the little... Little things and all that. So anyway, this, uh, this fly here is called the Troll. And this is a fly that originally was going to be... I'm almost an exclusive trout spay stone nymph, if if you will. Um, something you could swing that was kind of streamer-esque, but uh, it ended up being a fly that really works for trout spay, standard indicator nymphing, and euro nymphing. It's just been a killer. So, um, uh, you know, if there's if there's anything euro nymphing taught us, it's that trout are kind of dumb and we can get away with a little bit more than we thought we could at least in uh, subsurface world right i do think in dry fly world you still got to be on the ball um a bit uh more with drag free floats well not always drag free like caddis and stuff move all over the place so do stones but a little bit more exact representation of what they're eating on the surface i think they're just way more wary of of surface feeding activity but uh in the sub aquatic world they've got a little bit more free reign to be loose and we see that with the what they actually eat for euro nymphs don't represent anything uh necessarily on a real trout diet but they uh they eat them so they don't you know so our duchess just had leg surgery so she's all gimped up and she's trying to do more than she should all right so Got a size 8 scud hook. I just threw on some dubbing here. This is the SSS Rainbow from Hell Dub. The reason I like this is it's it's flashy, but it's not insanely flashy. And it, it's very reminiscent of the old Kaufman Stone blend that I really like. They're, they're black and brown uh, and golden stone blends that have just a ton of color option. Like just a ton of colors mixed into the base. Uh, I've always really liked that look. So I just tied... Uh, Tied a little bit, uh, a little ball of that in. This is going to be flexi floss. This is going to be our our split tail that the stone nymphs have. So double it back over. All right, that's our split little tail. I'm going to do a dubbing loop. I got a squeaky bobbin. I found my favorite bobbin, but uh, boy, is it squeaky! All right. And then on this, I'm just going to grab a little bit of rabbit. It's probably too much. We don't need much at all. A little bit of rabbit, real short. We're going to do a little dubbing loop, spread it out, and then give it a zip. And then wrap that on. So the whole premise of this fly is movement and flow. So the reason, uh, the reason I chose to do this style is on the swing um, a lot of flies you need to on the on the swing because originally this was a trout spay specific fly on the swing 
you're you have to put movement into the fly if you're going to get movement at all because there's no current flow um like like rubber legs and all that don't necessarily move as well on the swing as they do dead drifted um just because you don't have the currents hitting them in in the same manner so i wanted to create a stone nymph that was i'm going to trim these to about one and a half oh, these are about two times the length of the hook so I just wanted to create a trout spay that a uh, trout spay stone that wasn't as rigid as all the other stone nymphs with the larva lace bodies and woven bodies. I wanted something just that had a lot of action to it, you know. Um, if you look at a stone nymph, um, I'm just gonna throw a little UV cure on this. If you look at stones when they um, when you throw in in the water, they are kicking like crazy and you know trying to get back down to the surface. If you ever and then pop this out real quick. If you ever look at a stone, go grab a stone fly off one of the rocks and take a look at it, and then throw it in the water, and you'll watch that thing just go erratic as hell, kicking down and trying to get back down to the bottom underneath the rock. Uh, they are not. They are not um, still creatures, if you will. They, uh, they're super active. And so that was kind of the, the mind behind this, is I know it's not a natural presentation to be swinging a stone flying up, but we could get a lot of that, a lot of that movement and, and basically get as much as we can uh, for natural movement of a fly, even though we're swinging it, and that's not a, a necessarily a natural presentation um, if you, you know, trout space is a ton of fun and, and it's picking up and people are really enjoying it. So try to figure out a way that we could get as much natural movement out of a fly while still be able to swing it and have a good time. If that makes sense. I'm going to grab a rabbit strip here. This is a little micro rabbit strip. I've got an embroidery needle and this is a power pro 50 pound. I'm just going to pop it. You could use 30. Um, I would probably use 30 if I could find my 30, but I could only find my 50, so I'm using 50. I'm going to go down. I'm just going to weave through this rabbit. Um, you know what I might do is just use the vise so I don't stab myself. Let's take a second, just pop it through the rabbit. And the reason I'm doing this and not looping it, well, it's a few reasons. I don't want to necessarily um, hinder, hinder movement here. So I am, especially with this 50 pound, so I'm weaving it through a lot like uh, Tom Larimer's loop leech, same kind of premise. Uh, it keeps the hook where it needs to be at the end of the rabbit strip and it doesn't, um, I don't have to worry, oh I just broke that needle, hopefully I can. So if you're wondering about the uh, strength of uh, Regal's jaws, um, I just trashed my embroidery needle. So. Um, no shortage of holding power. All right, so I've got my rabbit strip laced through. You see that here. Now I'm going to take, gosh, every time I do a video, somebody needs to call. I'm gonna clinch knot my hook here.
put it in the vise and give it a good tighten a downer. The reason I'm not looping this is because A, I'm not worried about this 50 pound ever breaking. B, um, I don't want to inhibit movement, right? So, you know, you double up, um, you double up on 50 pound power, power pro, you know, you've added a ton of rigidity and stiffness, which in steelhead flies, you know, I mean, we're talking about everything's going to be bigger. So the water pressure kind of counteracts that. But in this, um, you know, we're just going smaller here. So, um, I'm going to UV this knot here real quick. And so in particular, I'm using on this one, on the knot, um, I'm using the Pro UV. Reason being is the Pro UV tends to stick really well to uh, tons of different surfaces. I would say more surfaces than any other of the UV products. Lay down, lay down. And um, it's... It, it's one of the only UVs that remains flexible uh, without breaking. It's got a really high like flex pattern to it. Um, and so it doesn't just pop off like ice cream shell style, you know. All right, so now I've got our rabbit laced. I'm gonna trim this end here down to just barely poke a knot there, okay. And that is going to be the body of our new stone nymph. So now I'm going to take this off. I've got these two little jig bombs. These are an Umqua. Um, I guess I need to debarb it for the jig bombs. This is an Umqua. Duchess, stop. Hey. Stop. Uh, Umqua product. And what they allow us to do is create a direction, directional, um, a directional uh, up or down orientation without a bead or anything like that. I mean, it is a bead, but you can you can pick exactly what you want to be the bottom so uh, which they say uh, regardless of hook orientation right so usually the hook determines the up or down because there's more weight at the bottom of the hook than the top right because you got the bend and there's more there's just more metal down here um, but these you can actually write a hook up and then use these on the bottom and they just direct your fly so you actually have up and down orientation uh, no matter what's going on with the rest of the fly which i think is really cool now in this particular fly we're just going to cut this off anyway so it doesn't matter so this hook here doesn't it doesn't matter i mean i don't even know what kind of hook this is it's just a 3x long like size i think eight or whatever cheap hook i've had them forever they're just like in a generic bag i don't even know who made them i know they're not a good hook i think they were uh i think they were dairikis that um Tyreke ended up, they used to be a pretty decent hook, and then they ended up um, going to a different manufacturer, and they, they got to be kind of garbage, and you can tell by the tempering, like this dark tempering is different, where they used to have an old bronze, like a nice bronze tempering, and those were the good ones, and then these ones just have a real dull finish, and they, they tend to break and bend out, so I'm just using it as a shank, essentially, so I'm going to throw our body on and now we've got to determine how long we want this right how big do we want this fly so I'm gonna go total fly length of we'll say probably two and a half inches which is pretty big for a trap fly you know tie this in now I'm going to take my rabbit or my power pro out of the rabbit and trim the rabbit and 
and then wrap the power probe back to really lock it down. And now we've essentially made this insanely secure. So that's our new body and you can see it just flows and we'll have a ton of movement. All right, so first order of business, this is gonna be basically tied like in the round, if you will. And so I want to push this jig bomb as far back as I can and I'm going to secure it in place and this will determine our um, where things are just going to kind of lay in this fly. We set these jig bombs where we want them now. We basically just X over them and it's not like insanely secure but it gives us a good reference point of where we're going to start things and where we're going to stop things okay so i do want to loosely imitate a stone fly so i'm going to find my hen first of all hen symbol all right so i'm going to throw a wing case in here um, and you can use a bunch of different things. I'm just going to use this Firefly Flash. Just because I want, uh, I don't know, I just think, it, I just like the way it looks. Okay. Toss that in. Gonna add some dubbing. Pull our wing case over. See, this bobbin's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, got that. Fix it right now with some. There we go, that's better. All right. Cool. So now I'm going to add some legs. Just had that hand saddle over go and you can kind of pick any any hand saddle you want it's not uh, you know there's no it's hard for me to do these material description or like material list right because I just kind of find stuff I like and there's a million different things you could use as far as like you could use a strong saddle you could use schlop in as long as it's kind of the right size Hen saddles just kind of seem to be the right size, and I like the variegation you get with a lot of them. They're kind of tough to find right now, so um, don't uh, don't be like distressed if you can't get like this exact hen saddle. This is just a, a modeled brown, but there's a million things that are going to work here. I mean, you could just use a piece of black schlop, and I'm sure it'd be fine. Uh, I just kind of like this color variegation. Um, so just tie with what you got, you know, or or something you can find. Um, if it's not the exact thing, like, just like I say, don't stress. All right. There's that. Wrap our hand saddle. Clip it off. Bam. A little more dubbing. And that's going to, the dubbing's going to put us over our hump. Bam, 
just like that, and I might trim, actually these legs are okay, I might trim them down just a tiny bit. Now what you can do here, so these jig bombs can kind of, if you're putting legs in between them, what I would recommend is just throwing a little dubbing in here. You can kind of see on the bottom where they can kind of manipulate direction. And so you can just throw a little dubbing in there and then wrap it down with your thread. And that'll kind of help buffer everything out to where it won't kick the legs certain directions. All right, second set of legs. shorter a little shorter than your first set we're gonna run our second hen saddle yep come back And then these are the, uh, forgot to say on these jig bombs, these are the 4.0s that I'm using. I'm just using two of them. Just purely for dense ass weight, man, just to get it down. Alright, cool. And then a little bit more dubbing for to jump over to our next little tier. Right, and then last set of legs. Then trim them. Last hen saddle, so three stages just like the uh, insect. And what you can do if you want, um, all this fluff down here, you can actually put this at the head. You can tie it in kind of down on the feather and then just use this marabou at the head um, to create more flow, you know. Um, Again, there's a lot of so if you have a really short feather, um, just use the use the fluff, use the marabou. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times in steelhead flies, intruders and stuff. I specifically seek out feathers that I can do that with. And there's no there's no difference here as far as what we're trying to accomplish, um, just movement. Uh oh. So it looks like we're not going to get our last turn. So that's always fun when that happens. So the way I fix this is I just peel off a little bit of what I can, find my stem, grab a hold of it, and then just start. You might lose a turn, but I probably had too many turns in that one anyway.
All right, now I'm going to look at my legs. Probably trim these down a little bit here. There we go. And then if you want, you can throw, like, I might just do it just to show you. But you can always throw just a little dubbing head on here. More of a, like a traditional stone kind of dubbing nymph. You can throw a little front antenna in it if you want. Um, really not going to matter, I don't think. But you can go that way. All right, and last course of action is to get a, a rougher upper and just wrap the hell out of this thing and just get it to look horrible. And there you have it. So now I would... I don't have my clippers. I have no idea what the hell happened to them, so I'm hoping this works. Like I say, these aren't like the best hooks, so look at that. You got it. That doesn't always work, right? So just depending on what hook you've chosen, um, sometimes you, it'll break like up into your body. So ideally, you still want like clippers, but um, that is the troll. Again, trout spay, cool little stone nymph, uh, swinger, trout spay. <sighs> uh, it will have a ton of action for you. Um, again, you can nymph it, you can euro it, you can. it's heavy enough to euro nymph. Uh, a lot of different applications for this fly, but originally for, you know, for people that want to like do some trout spay stuff in the morning of like the hatch, right now is the perfect time for this fly. Um, We've got some cold weather, the, some bugs are out, but you know we're still in major nymph migration and fish um, really could care less that there's some bugs around. I mean, you might find a few risers in the evenings right now, but we're, we're a little bit away um, from the main event. And then, you know, in the mornings, if you want to head out early, um, you can always swing, swing nymphs on the trout spay and then, you know, hit the dry flies uh, afternoon and evening. So anyway, uh, Good to be back. Thanks for hanging in there, everybody, and uh, understanding the uh, position and all of that. And uh, hope to see you soon.